us in Hesselberg here, we're about to have a look at the wild Chiarceus norisium, or locally known as the Chiara Norris. The Chiara Nori are known for their infectious, happy-go-lucky spirits and high-pitched laughter. <laughs> in fact, anything caught in a five-meter radius will experience a break in the sound barrier especially if you are stuck in a Mandarin class for 50 minutes. <laughs> now, besides their infectious positivity, the Kiara Nori are always on the move and always hungry. Their main source of nutrition is Smarties. So, I would advise leaving those at home. Also, a single Kiara Norris can produce music at random, causing anything around to join in and belt out their lungs. Their last known quality is that they are a living enigma. How they manage to finish work in two seconds while managing an endless pile of extracurriculars is truly a mystery. <laughs> ah, here she comes, the one and only Kira Norris. <laughs> I'd like to start off by just stating two things about myself that I'd guess a lot of people in here already know. One, I'm black. <laughs> two, I'm a competitive swimmer. The words black swimmer may or may not sound unfamiliar to you, but they are certainly not as easy to come by as, say, a white swimmer or a black track star. Yes, swimming in America is a predominantly white sport, but why is this? Why do 70% of African-American kids not know how to swim? Why are black children three times more likely to drown than white children? Why has the swimming pool been referred to as America's most racist institution? For hundreds of years, Africans had been known to be some of the greatest swimmers in the world. Throughout the 19th and 20th centuries, nationwide segregation completely removed this renowned aquatic status from black culture in the US, with consequences that are clearly still present. Like I said, I am a black swimmer. And as far as I know, I have always been one. I've heard the story about how at age three, I refused to go to pre-K one day because I knew the swim instructors would make us put our faces in the water at the after school swim lessons. Countless times I've seen the videos of my first swim lessons at the pool school, where I nearly gave our teacher a heart attack every time I would submerge myself underwater while she worked with the other kids. But I've only relived these moments secondhand. I do not remember them myself. So I can truly say that for as long as I can remember, I have been a swimmer. When I was seven, I went to the National Black Heritage Meet for the first time. It was in Orlando, Florida, and as one would expect, there were black swimmers everywhere. All shades of melanin were present, from vanilla latte to cold brew. <laughs> Still, seven-year-old me noticed no difference in this swim meet from any other I'd been to, other than the fact that the people there really liked to dance to the loud music they played, and I got free gifts for no apparent reason. I wouldn't go as far to say that this was normal to me, but for all I knew, all the meets in Florida were like this. How was I supposed to know that my skin color automatically made my involvement with swimming something to be celebrated? About a year later, the movie Pride came out. Pride is set in 1974 Philadelphia, where two black men, Jim and Elston, changed the lives of some inner city kids by helping them not only grow as swimmers, but also as people as they struggle with prejudice, crime, and poverty. At the time, I loved the movie for several reasons, but I now realize that the film meant so much more to me than my mind could have grasped at that point in my life. Watching the movie Pride caused me to discover my own racial identity as a swimmer. It led me to understand that my journey may be a little more challenging because I am black. Very recent events have brought to light our country and community's history of racial division that may have seemed very ancient and distant to some. Still, swimming has and will always be a constant in my life. 
and escape. Swimming for the Memphis Tigers has given me somewhat of a superpower. I have been blessed with the gift of colorblindness. Not a literal colorblindness, but the mental capacity to not see color, but instead only see teammate or competitor. As a swimmer, I have become friends with all types of people, all skin colors. In my personal experience, my value in the sport has never been defined by my race, not by my religion, not by how much money my family has, not by what part of town I grew up in, and that is why I love it. The pool knows no color. The clock cannot discriminate based upon race. It cannot and will not lie to you. It tells it how it is. The clock is both my closest ally and fiercest competition. My dad recently asked me that given both my positive and negative experiences as a black swimmer, if I would do anything differently. I can genuinely answer that question with a hard no. If I did, then who would have inspired him to co-create Make a Splash Mid-South, an organization that provides free swim lessons across the city? When would I have become woke enough to wear my full-fledged afro no matter where I go? Whose dad would have approached the parents of a timid nine-year-old to encourage them to bring their daughter to swim for Memphis Tigers? This timid nine-year-old is now 17 and now my best friend. That being said, I have certainly not changed the world with my swimming these past 10 years. But every time I teach a swim lesson, I could be saving a life. Or whenever I give a younger swimmer some words of encouragement, it just might make her day. To my beautiful and wonderful class of 2018, let us take on this year with a joy that stays in the hearts of SMS forever. And please remember that it is simply impossible for all of us, or even many of us, to change the whole world. But each and every one of us can change someone's world. Just as The Chance the Rapper once put it, everybody's somebody's everything. And in my opinion, that will always be enough. Thank you.